Our bodies are like a large ear when we're listening to music. I mean, does music, can it get into your pores like it does into your ears? I'm just very fascinated by this. Like, do our bones, they take, you know, different parts of our body, like bones? They do. Every object, be it a bone in your body, be it the earth, has a natural set of frequencies at which it wants to vibrate by virtue of how it's constructed, how it's put together, what it's made of. And it's moving your eardrum. That's a very intimate act. It's very, I'm very literally touching you. And when you speak to me, you are literally touching me. And when we extend that principle to the sound of a violin. It tells us a lot about the brain at its peak demand, uh, situations would demand the most from it. Different, and that's it. You could put two notes together, you could put five notes together, and then everything else, so it, it's, it's, that's as simple as it gets. Um, but from those combinations, you can actually describe. Artery, and this is that, you know, the way nature just allows us to evolve with rhythm all around us. And over that we heard the sound of the external female voice, that was actually myself singing, next, standing next to the mother in a normal um, volume of voice. A basic, simple experiment, really, to just get an understanding whether they um, do actually decode musical expressions in music pieces. In how do you define a piece of music? That's how, what is truth? I think there are lots, since there are many, many different truths contained within even a very simple piece of music. Merci. One of the things about musical memory is that in some respects, you know, songs stick in our head and maybe that's because they're supposed to. Uh, it's difficult to talk about these things without talking about evolution.